Jason is so obsessed with martial art films that he even dreams about them. An unfortunate event leads him to teleport into a world where Kung Fu is a lifestyle. He must learn Kung Fu to be able to carry out the responsibility he has been given. Let's dive into all the action this story is about to bring. Jason wakes up after dreaming of a Kung Fu battle on a dreamy mountain. He frequently visits a shop owned by an old Chinese man named Hop, who gives him great deals on action films. One day, while Jason is looking for more films, he is drawn into the storage room where he finds a mysterious looking staff. Hop explains that his great-grandfather was given the staff to keep it safe for a man who delivered to its rightful owner. Jason claims that he has seen it in his dreams. But Hop ignores him, saying he has been watching too many action films and offers him a good price on some Bruce Lee movies. While cycling back home, Jason tries to play it cool with a girl from school and lies that he is learning Kung Fu. Some street gang boys start bothering him, asking him to show his Kung Fu skills. They find his movie stack and realize that Jason visits the shop where the owner checks cash. He is forced to get them in the old man's shop and Hop gladly welcomes Jason inside. Hop asks if Jason has brought his friends when the gang leader asks him for his cash. Hop doesn't say anything, so they start looking around for the money. Hop strikes one of the boys with the staff, and the leader instinctively turns around and shoots Hop, shocking everyone. Hop asks Jason to take the staff and deliver it to its rightful owner. Jason runs off as the gang chases him to stop him from telling anyone. They get to the rooftop where Jason gets trapped. But before the gang can attack, the staff pushes him off the building. He wakes up in an ancient-looking room, aided by a Chinese-speaking woman. After rushing out of the house, Jason is bewildered to discover that he is not in Boston. He tries asking an old man about his whereabouts, but neither of them understand each other. Just then, several army officials start attacking the huts, taking away the woman and killing the men. I don't know, kind of sounds like Boston to me. One of them notices Jason hiding and orders his soldiers to arrest him. Jason runs for his life, but the soldiers soon surround him. A drunken man gets there and fights off all the soldiers. After escaping the soldiers, they sit at a bar, where the man introduces himself as Lu Yang. Jason asks if he is dreaming, but Lu says that the life he was living earlier was a dream. Only a Zen master or someone carrying something important can cross the gate called No Gate. Really? That's what it's called? No Gate? Jason asks if it's because of the staff, and Lu starts telling him a famous tale. The legend says that a seeker will arrive with the staff and deliver it to the Monkey King. 500 years ago, the Monkey King refused to follow the order of the Jade Warlord and fought off all the soldiers the Warlord sent his way. His defiance already annoyed Warlord, and to make it worse, Monkey King crashed the Peach Banquet uninvited. The banquet is held at the Kingdom of Five Elements Mountains, every 500 years, where the heavenly emperors gather to drink the elixir of immortality and celebrate their longevity. Yep, still sounds like Boston. The Jade Emperor was amused by Monkey King, but the warlord got infuriated when Monkey King didn't bow to him. The emperor instructed warlord to give Monkey King a title and let him go before going for his 500 years of meditation and leaving Warlord in charge by the mandate of heaven. However, instead of following the Emperor's command, Warlord challenged Monkey King to a duel. An intense fight ensued where Monkey King played around by creating a clone from his hair. Realizing the power of the staff, Warlord suggested they fight with the fist and without any magic. The gullible Monkey King believed him, and as soon as he left the staff, 
Warlord used his magic and turned him into stone. But before turning, Monkey King cast the staff out of the kingdom to keep it safe. And it ended up in a video shop in Boston. As they finish talking, more soldiers arrive at the bar and start attacking them to obtain the staff. Lou gives them a good fight while Jason barely manages to stay alive. When they are stuck between the soldiers, a girl helps them using her darts and introduces herself as Golden Sparrow. As they decide to go to the Five Elements Mountains and return the staff so Jason can go back home, Lou refuses to go with him as there will be no wine there. Sparrow speculates that Lou is one of the eight immortals, so he needs his wine, which is his elixir of immortality. Jason stops Lou from leaving and asks him to be his master and teach him Kung Fu. And so, the journey begins. Lou gives Jason mundane tasks, like beating off the grass, which irritates Jason as he asks Lou to teach him some tricks like he has seen in the films. Lou pours Jason some tea and doesn't stop until the water overflows. He notes that Jason's mind is already full with all the things he has seen, so he will not be able to learn until he empties the cup. Jason literally empties the cup, which disappoints Lou even more. In the kingdom, we learn that the women were taken away for the filthy warlord. His guards inform him about the staff that has been seen around the village as the old tale has started to spread again. Warlord kills the guard for disturbing him and then orders the other guards to call the witch. Huh, I didn't know my ex was in this movie. The next day, Jason wakes up to find himself alone and is chased by a man who takes away the staff before Lou and Sparrow can get there. They follow the man to a temple and Lou gets inside. The man turns out to be a monk who doesn't budge while Lou goofs around with him. He only opens his eyes when Lou talks about the staff, and they start to fight over it. The two seem very skilled in kung fu as a watchworthy battle ensues between them. The monk finally opens his mouth for the first time to reveal that he took the staff because he was looking for the seeker who would take it to the monkey king. Lou informs him that Jason is the seeker he is looking for. And both men laugh looking at Jason, realizing the legend of the great seeker turned out to be this stupid boy. Ooh, that's gonna sting. Meanwhile, in the bar, the witch mercilessly investigates the owners for Jason's information before she is given the dart that Sparrow used on the soldiers as a clue. On the other hand, Lou and Monk both have different techniques for teaching Jason which overwhelms him. But they eventually work together to train him to become a good kung fu warrior. After a long training period, they are pleased to see the changes in Jason, who has become more patient and focused. The group continues traveling through the villages, witnessing the traces of violence left behind by warlord soldiers. This infuriates Sparrow, as she is determined to kill Warlord but the monk advises her not to indulge in such rage and go back to her parents. She then reveals that her father was a government official who disobeyed Warlord. In return, the entire village was punished by his soldiers. As every last person from her village was killed, her mother managed to hide her inside a well before she was killed by the Warlord himself. She has trained herself to kill Warlord with a jade dart that can kill an immortal like Warlord. After walking through a deadly desert, they finally arrive near the mountains where they continue their training. One day, as Jason and Sparrow are talking, the witch gets there with the Warlord soldiers. She has promised to bring this staff to Warlord in exchange for the elixir of immortality. She offers to send Jason back home if he gives her the staff, but Jason refuses. She tries to take the staff and releases the army on them, which ensues another kung fu battle in the beautiful spring field. The group fights off the soldier and runs away when more soldiers attack them. 
the witch takes her bow and sends the arrow in the direction where the group ran. After riding a while, Lou falls off his horse, and the group finds out that he has been hit with an arrow. They take him to the nearby monastery and ask about getting him some wine, his immortal elixir that would heal him. Lou then confesses that he is not immortal, as he failed the scholar exam that would have given him immortality. So there's a test for this thing? Being immortal required detachment from all worldly things, but Lou could not do that, and he believes that he would rather die loving humans than live forever. One of the senior monks reveals that there is only one elixir of immortality that the warlord keeps safe in his kingdom. For that, they would need to go to the Five Elements Mountains and fight all the warlord soldiers. Jason wants to go immediately, but Monk insists that they will go after two days on the night of no moon, as several lives are at stake. However, the next morning, Monk discovers that Jason went alone with the staff. Jason reaches the kingdom, and the guards let him in after seeing the staff. The witch is also present as Jason demands the elixir in exchange for the staff. Meanwhile, Monk and Sparrow are seen rushing towards the kingdom. Warlord has already promised it to the witch, so he asks the two to fight for it till death. Jason gives her a good fight, but the witch is too strong and defeats him easily. Warlord mocks Jason for believing that he ever had a chance, and before the soldiers could behead him, Monk and Sparrow get there to unleash havoc. As a fight ensues in the palace, the warlord converts his palace fountain into a lava pond. He throws the staff into it, but Monk manages to save the wand and starts fighting warlord. Soon, the little monks also arrive, carrying Lou as they join the fight. Jason manages to throw the elixir towards a monk kid, who throws it to Lou. He revives himself after drinking the elixir and immediately joins in the fight. Warlord starts overpowering Monk, who throws the staff at Jason and asks him to hit the frozen Monkey King. As soon as Jason does that, a huge, magical wave pushes everyone to the ground and returns the Monkey King. The Monk is revealed to be a clone of the Monkey King. While the Warlord and Monkey King are undergoing a struggle, Lou and the Witch are having their own battle on the terrace. Lou throws the witch off the terrace, but she grabs him with her hair and starts climbing up. Lou then cuts off her hair, bidding her goodbye. Ding dong, the witch is dead? Oh, that's another movie. Sparrow interrupts Warlord and tries to kill him with a jade dart. But Warlord uses his magic to throw her into a wall before continuing to fight with Monkey King. Jason rushes to the brutally injured Sparrow, who hands him the dart. As Monkey King pushes Warlord away, he falls on Jason's arms and gets stabbed by Sparrow's dart before falling on his own lava pond. Jason tells Sparrow that Warlord is dead and she dies in peace. Jade Emperor soon arrives and says that he could not do anything for Sparrow as she wrote her own destiny. They all bid Jason goodbye as he goes back home to the gate of no gate. Back home, he wakes up on the ground where the gang is following him. He silently takes some punches in the beginning, but soon shows the gang leader the power of Jackie Chang Kung Fu, while all his friends run off scared. Hop is taken to the hospital as the officers assure Jason that he is going to be all right. Hop jokes that he is immortal, before the ambulance leaves. Jason then notices a girl who looks exactly like Sparrow. She works at a shop called Golden Sparrow and praises Jason for his bravery. The film ends as they bid goodbye with the hope of meeting again. So what are your thoughts on this one? And what would your elixir be if you had to have an elixir of immortality? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more from Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel to get notified about when our next video is posted. Thanks for watching.